Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, a lot of us often complain about how hard life is on us. I know I have at times, even though I didn't say it out loud. We get tired and wish we could chuck the whole thing and go live like a nomad or a hopo. We think it would be nice not to have any responsibilities or obligations. However, I'm sure you'll change your mind about complaining against the daily grind after you hear our story today. Let's call this one... The Boy Who Wouldn't Quit. Ranger Headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Oh, yes, Chuck, how are you? Who, me? (laughs) I'll be glad to do it. Oh, not at all. The honor's all mine, and I mean that. Yes, Saturday evening at 8, the high school auditorium. Right. Goodbye. What's going on Saturday night? I've been asked to award the Eagle Scout badges to six young men, Henry. Well, how about that? That's great. I'll say it is. I consider the job a high honor. Those lads are the cream of the crop. You said it, Sonny. Those Eagle Scout badges aren't easy to come by. I'd make them all more worthwhile. Yeah, and how? Hey, can we go with? Excuse me, pal. I neglected to tell you that Chuck's invited all of us. That means dress uniforms. Yeah, and Stumpy's got to trim his beard. (laughs) And wash face. (laughs) Well, have you know I wash this face of mine every day, whether it needs it or not. (laughs) Well, looks like I'll have to go home and polish up my uniform now. Got to look sharp as a tack. Yeah, this is no ordinary occasion. Right. Saturday night will be an occasion of achievement and honor. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the high spot of the evening, the awarding of the Eagle Scout badges. It is our distinct privilege to confer this honor upon six of our young men. They have worked hard and diligently to climb to the top of the scouting ladder. It is equally our privilege to have a gentleman here tonight who is a friend to all of us, Ranger Bill Jefferson. Ladies and gentlemen, I consider the honor of awarding these young men their hard-earned Eagle Scout badges one of the high points of my life. These lads have come to this top rung of the scouting ladder by merit and ability. Not one scout has ever earned any award without proving himself worthy. Moreover, the Eagle Scout Award is acquired only by the lads who have the drive and desire to earn it. It must be earned... And that's why it carries high honor with it. The young man who wears this badge tells the world that he is one of the few who has fought the battle of accomplishment and won. James Hertford. Cyrus Alexander. Barrett McClement. Sheldon Parker. Carl Osgood. Norman Fitzgerald. I have pinned your Eagle Scout badges to your uniforms. You now wear the mark of distinction that is the goal of every Scout watching you tonight. You now have a greater obligation to everyone around you because now you're an Eagle Scout. Wear your badge well. Tell us to go to your seats now. Thanks, Bill. I feel kind of shaky. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a particularly high point 
in the life of Norman Fitzgerald. I'm sure you all know that he is the young man who stood with the help of crutches. Norman's life story is the perfect example of the grit and determination our American young men possess. My reason for relating Norman's story to you is to encourage all of us when we come to the point in life when we say, I can't do it, or I can't go any further. When Norman was 12 years old, he loved the great American sport of football, just like every other red-blooded American land. It was a warm day during Indian summer. Yes, my Quiet down, Quiet down, you guys. We don't want to get caught for taking too much time. Yeah. What's the play, Normie? The hidden ball play. Harry, I'll slip the ball to you, and I'll make believe I've got it, okay? All right, now, you guys in the line, hold tight so we can get enough time to pull this off. And then Harry will break toward right in. All right, the signal 64. Let's go. Okay, you guys ready? Three, 18, 20, 90, 64. Hey, Army's hurt. Thanks for coming, Bill. That's quite all right, Al. How's Norman? I don't know yet. He's been in surgery almost two hours. Mm -hmm. That's why I asked you to come. I'm almost crazy with worry. I can understand that, all right. Oh, uh, here comes the doc now. How is he, doctor? Well, he'll live. That's all I can say at the moment. I'm sorry. Is it that bad? Yes, he, he fell on a rock. A jagged rock, and it damaged his spine. Now, don't blame the boys he played with, and don't blame football. You know, every year, hundreds of boys fall just as hard on jagged rocks and come away with only bruises. And this is just one of those things, an accident. I'm very sorry I can't give you better news. Thank you. You've been very kind. When can I see him? Well, perhaps in an hour... But for only just a few minutes. You can see him again this evening. Uh, convey my sympathy to your wife. Thank you, Doctor. Let's go sit down, Bill. How about going over to the coffee shop with me, Al? I think you can stand a cup or two. Yes, thank you. I'll go with you. Why, Bill? Why, Norman? Don't understand. I wouldn't wish this on another youngster. But why, Norman? Hold your horses, Al. Don't jump to conclusions. Even though the doctor couldn't give a favorable report, sometimes they have to wait a few days till the initial shock of the accident passes off. Do you really think the doctor might have a better report in a few days? Al, I'm not a doctor, nor do I pretend to be. But I do know it's a possibility. Perhaps a vague possibility. Bill, it's a strand of hope, a slim thread. And that's what I need right now. Well, better go back to the hospital now. The hour's almost up. And yes, by all means. Your son will never walk again. Never walk? I'm awfully sorry to have to tell you this, but... Well, I, I know you want to know the truth. Yes. I can't believe it. I can't. Doctor, please don't misunderstand me, but are you sure your diagnosis is right? You don't have to apologize for the question, Bill. Yes, I know my diagnosis is right. I've checked and rechecked it. Yes. Of course. I'll gladly call in another doctor if you wish, Al. I'll not be offended. No. Your diagnosis is good enough for me. I know you wouldn't tell me unless you were sure. D do you think time might help Norman's condition? Well, who can tell? Perhaps in a few months or a year, surgery might help. Then again, there may be nothing we can do. It's all in God's hands now. I've gone as far as... Humanly possible. Dr. 
Norman left the hospital and was taken home. The boy's spirit was fine. Except for the fact that he couldn't walk, Norman resumed a normal life. Six months went by, and then one day... Ranger headquarters, Bill Jefferson speaking. Bill, this is Al. Oh, yes, Al. How are you? How's Norman? Oh, I'm fine, and so is Norm. Uh, that is as far as he can be. Say, can you stop by the house this evening? Well, I don't know. I have a meeting I'm supposed to attend. C- can you miss the meeting? Was well, my coming that important? Yes, it's about Norman. Okay, I'll be there, Al. Why don't you come for supper, and you'll still be able to make the meeting. Well, that sounds good. Thanks for the invitation. I'll see you later. Bye. You want more dessert, Bill? <laughs> no, thanks, Norman. I'm bulging at the seams already from this super fine meal. The uh, strawberry shortcake makes my mouth water, but I honestly couldn't do away with another meal. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's joking with his pot. <laughs> I do too, son. Uh, but we don't want to kill him for old reading. <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy way to go. <laughs> well, let's go in the living room and talk, shall we? Go ahead, Norman. We'll be along. Okay. He handles those crutches like a veteran. Yes. I'm glad you didn't offer to help him. He's trying to get along on his own. Uh, That's fine. I'm glad to hear it. Hey, are you coming in here, or do I have to come and get you? (laughs) See what I mean? (laughs) Let's go. We're coming right away, son. Well, what's the important information about Norman? This guy of mine wants to start scouting. Can you imagine that? Why not? I can handle myself okay. I don't know whether to let him or not. What do you think, Bill? I think it'd be a good idea. I told you it'd say yes, Pop. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Now, how about you running along and doing your schoolwork while Bill and I chin a bit? He has to leave soon, you know. Sure. Thanks a lot, Bill. See you later. Okay. Now, let me know if I can help you with your scouting. Bill, I I wonder if he'll really do all right in scouting. There's only one way to find out. Let him try it. But what about the outdoor activities? How will he manage them? I'd say that part will have to be worked out, Al. I'm sure the scoutmaster will be able to substitute other qualifications for Norman's getting ahead in scouting. Yeah, I guess that's the answer. I, I feel better about it now. Al, you and your wife have done a fine job handling your son with his terrible affliction. He's taking it in stride, and that's more than the majority of people would do. I know your son will make the grade all right, even though he can't walk. <laughs> Norman passed all the second-class requirements with flying colors until he came to the last one, the five-mile hike. Chuck Hollingsworth asked Al to be present at the next meeting of the troop committee men. Uh, Gentlemen, the main purpose of our meeting tonight is to discuss Norman Fitzgerald's final requirement for second-class scout. That, of course, is the five-mile hike. However, the hike can be waived in Norman's case and one outdoor merit badge substituted in its place. The merit badge could be in nature study. It's my recommendation that we make the substitution. That's a good idea. Uh, Gentlemen, I think the boy should be asked if he wants the substitution. Bill, how can Norman make a five-mile hike? I don't know. I'm sure he won't take the hike, but I feel that he should be consulted. Bill's right, gentlemen. My son's making a terrific fight to carry on as though he weren't crippled. I wish you would ask him to make the decision. Even if he agreed to take a merit badge to qualify, he'd appreciate being asked, I'm sure. You're right. It's got to be the boy's decision and not ours. I'll stop by and ask him this week. Mr. Hollingsworth, I plan on taking the hike. You're going to make a five-mile hike on crutches? Why not? Oh, I'm not going to be able to make it through the woods, but I can do it on a highway or or even in town. Pop doesn't know it, but I've been doing a mile every day. You've what? Sure, after school. 
Mom's been letting me go further and farther away from home, and I've got it up to a mile. Fantastic. Then you want to make a five-mile hike rather than substitute a merit badge? Yep, that's what I want to do. Do you think Norman can do it without hurting himself? Yes, I do, Al. Especially since he's been conditioning himself... However, I suggest you talk to the doctor first before giving your final approval. I will. Boy, that guy of mine has a lot of intestinal fortitude. And how? And we don't want to do anything to suppress it or even worse, to destroy it. Of course, he has to stay within reasonable bounds, too. Uh, uh, When's the hike taking place? Saturday morning, out on the North Highway. Mm -hmm. Chuck figures that's a good stretch of flat road and not much traffic. Good. I'll be there, and we'll set up two squad cars at either end of the five-mile stretch with their flashers going to give Norman maximum protection from oncoming cars. Oh, that'll be fine, Bill. I appreciate your help. See you Saturday morning, unless the doc says no. <laughs> right. Goodbye. Are you ready, Henry? Yeah. We're at the five-mile line, and we got the flasher going. Stump and I will stop all the cars and tell them to proceed with caution through the hike area. Right. See you in five miles. Over and out. Uh, Gray Wolf, are you and Tom all set at this end? Yes, we ready, Bill. Okay, Norm, you can start hiking. You made your first mile, son. H- how do you feel? Just great, Pop. Just great. Three miles, Norm. Now you're over the hump. Yeah. I I can see the other car now. That's my goal. You getting tired, son? Just a little, Pop. But I've only got one mile to go. Another hundred feet and you'll be there, son. Can you make it all right? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody better catch me at the end. I feel faint. You just crossed the five-mile line. I got a hold of you, Norm. I made it. I made it. Did, did I overdo it, Doctor? No, you're in fine shape. But he fainted at the end. Oh, so do a lot of athletes from exertion. I used to be a track man. Why, when I put on the final spurt, I could hardly see the track. My head would pound, and I thought somebody was choking me. That's a natural reaction. Doc's right, Al. I remember the days when I played basketball like a wild Indian. It's all exertion. (laughs) These youngsters are like spring steel. They snap back into place right away. Norman, you've done the most amazing thing I've seen. I'm proud to be your scoutmaster. Thank you, sir. Bill, what do you think of this guy of mine? I think someday he'll be an Eagle Scout. Do you really, Bill? You're not the kind of fellow who would quit before he got to the top. While I was trying to give Norman a big pat of encouragement, I didn't realize until several years later that he really was shooting for the top. Norman passed first class, star, and life scout tests with flying colors. He managed to work out, one way or another, all the outdoor requirements. Now, I know you're wondering how he passed the swimming requirements. Well, he did. Norman developed a way whereby he could keep his injured legs afloat and swim. It took hours and days of practice, but he did it. One day, I was in my office. When... Norman! Hello, Bill. Come on in. Grab a chair. Make yourself comfortable. Thanks. I will. Well, how are things with you, young man? 
Couldn't be better. I've come to ask some advice. Okay. Fire away. I've all the necessary merit badges for Eagle except life-saving. Fine. Do you find life-saving beyond your ability? I don't know. I'd sure like to try for it. But I need practice. Lots of practice. And help? Yes. I'll be glad to help you to get all the practice you need, Norm. Well, thanks, Bill. You sure can give a guy a lift. I thought for a minute I was licked and, and I'd have to substitute another merit badge or two for life-saving. That would make a big difference to you, wouldn't it? Yes. I've passed every scouting test so far. Not to make life-saving, well, it'd be admitting defeat. And I'm not the kind of guy who likes to quit. You're doing fine, Norm. Touch this end, you've made 300 yards. I'm doing better on my wind. A couple of weeks of swimming 300 yards. That should really condition me for the rest of the test. I'll say so. Here, let me help you out of the pool. Okay. Okay, here's your crutches. You had enough for one day. Be careful you don't slip on a wet floor. Yeah, I'll make it. Let's go to the locker room and change. Okay. Do you think I'll make it? Sound kind of doubtful. I didn't mean to sound that way. I believe I will. I know you will. I've worked out an eight-week schedule for us. By the end of it, you'll be able to pass your life-saving merit badge. Well, Chuck, have a chair. Tell me what's on your mind. Bill, I'm not going to let my son go through with the life-saving merit badge. Oh? I won't allow it either. It's too much for the lad. I know Norman's got his heart set on it, but he's going to have to be a substitute. I've already written for permission to make the substitution. Well, that's fine. Bill, why are you taking this so calmly? Because I really don't think you mean it. I do mean it. I was never more serious in all my life. He's not going to do it, and that's final. He'll kill himself and will be responsible. You've talked this over with Norman, I suppose? No, not yet, but I will. I'm not going to talk it over. I'm going to tell him. You've talked to the doctor about this? Yes, and he okayed it. As long as Norman can hear and see thunder and lightning, the doc will pass him. You know that's not true, Al. You're right. Nevertheless, he's not going to try it. This is final? Yes. Al and I have discussed this carefully, and this is final. Well, it's not final with me. He's not your son. What should you care? I didn't mean it. Forget what I said. But the answer is no. You mean the answer is no because you're a frightened father. Bill, are you calling me yellow? Yes, if you like plain English better. You haven't got the fortitude to watch the lad go through the grueling test. You're not afraid for him. You're afraid for yourself. You don't care about his happiness, only your own peace of mind. Is that so? Yes, it's so. You're going to take away his most prized possession, his courage and self-drive, because you can't take it anymore. You'd rather fail him as a father, so that you can have peace in your own heart, that you weren't responsible in case he had another accident. A deep fear has come to the top now. You'd rather he was a weakling, so he wouldn't run the risk of further injury or even death. But I'm telling you as sure as you're a foot high, you'll kill him with your decision. How? I'm trying to keep him safe. You'll kill him. He'll die of a broken heart and broken spirit. Well, he's almost to the top of the ladder that he fought so hard to climb. And now you're going to pull the ladder right out from under him because you're afraid. Al, where's your faith in the Lord and confidence in your doctor? We're wrong, and Bill's right, Al. You'll break his heart if you stop him. You ever see a horse that lost his spirit? Yes, I have. He's not good for anything after that. All right. 
You can train him for the test, Bill. And he can take it. But if anything happens, I'll never forgive myself or you. I'll never forgive you. me to get my street clothes off here in the water. Fifteen seconds, Norm. Oh, that's as fast as I can make it. I'm sorry. Oh, they won't argue over 15 seconds. No, I'll come in. you got to rescue me. Well, how do you feel, son? Just fine, Pop. What's your verdict, Doctor? <laughs> Norman's in fine physical condition. We're ready for the test, Al. My best wishes for your success go with you, Norman. He's all yours, Chuck, Bill. I shall call the tests one at a time, and you will proceed to perform them. Norman, I'm a judge for these tests. Just relax and keep calm. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Remove your street clothes and shoes as quickly as possible... Then swim 100 yards. Ready? Go. Swim 30 feet underwater with rope looped around your shoulders. Ready? Go. Rescue drowning person. Break stranglehold and bring person to shore. Ready? Go. Dive to the bottom of the pool and retrieve several small objects and a 10-pound weight. Ready? Go. Jump into the pool feet first and fully dressed and remove your clothes. Ready? Go. Go. Did I pass? Did I build... With flying colors, Norman. You've climbed the last rung of the ladder to become an Eagle Scout. Uh, that's great. Boy, that's great. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Norman received his Eagle Award here this evening. I know you'll agree that this young man has done something outstanding. And now, I would like to read this telegram. Congratulations and best wishes. I would like to have you visit me tomorrow so that I can give you an award for courage and heroism. Signed, Burton F. Harper, Governor. Well, Bill, I'm... I'm sorry I talked to you the way I did. Well, you were acting like a normal father. Took a lot of courage on your part to trust Norman and me into the doctor. Bill, how could I ever repay you for the wonderful help you've given me? You've repaid me already. I have? How? By showing me that you're the boy who wouldn't quit. Well, boys and girls, we sure found out from Norman what it means to have courage and determination. Sure, it was a tough battle, but it was worth it after the end was reached. And remember, the Lord is always there to help you if you first love him. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger! Ranger!